Hi, this is Misha. And today I've got a couple of first look products for you. This is the Sporter rifle. And this is the Hell Pup pistol. And we're going to be doing quite a bit with these this year, but I thought we would do a first look. These are manufactured in Poland by Pioneer Arms Incorporated. Once upon a time, these were imported into the USA by IO Incorporated. However, that partnership fell apart a number of years ago. In very late 2017, Pioneer Arms opened up a U.S. branch down in Dillon, Florida. So they were handling their own imports. They started off with their PPS 43C pistol, which we have a video on from a month or so back. And then they started to bring in the Help Up pistol. And most recently, January of 2018, the Sporter Rifle. And they do have some new products uh, that are slated to come in 2018, but no reason to spoil the surprise now or jinx it. So we'll deal with those as they come out. But I just spoke with uh, one of their distributors today and it um, looks like there's some new stuff hopefully coming in very soon. So, the elephant in the room. What the hell's up with this gun? We've got this wonderful stock. I mean, this is as ergonomic as it gets. It's also, I, I would assume, recycling. And this looks like it was part of a pallet or something at one time. This was definitely something else at one time. But even more interestingly, look at the magwell, or rather lack thereof. Also, the bayonet wings are shaved off here. We have a cleaning rod, and then we have a slant break, and it is spot welded at the bottom here, so it can't be unscrewed. That said, we do have a functioning pin. This is very similar to how most of your guns actually come in the country, be they Wasser tins or the Arsenal rifles or the Zastava NPAPs. If you're going to bring a gun in as a complete functioning gun, this is how they can bring it in to comply with the 89 executive order banning essentially Kalashnikovs by feature type and the 98 update that it banned the import of high capacity accepting, in other words, standard Magwell receivers. This stock qualifies as a thumbhole stock because it, dis it deletes the pistol grip. Since there's no magwell, obviously it really can't accept high capacity mags. Bayonet lug was one of the features banned in 89. You know, that rash of drive-by bayonettings in the early 90s was, uh, was really a problem back then. I think that's what led to boy bands. What do you think? Do you think that bayonet lugs led to boy bands? Discuss amongst yourselves. And the reason that this is tack welded on is because a threaded barrel was another banned feature. Now, this would not be allowed if it was a flash hider to be on. But since it's a muzzle brake, it's okay to spot weld it on and essentially use it as a thread protector, thread cover. This is how they come in. The 89 ban only applied to rifles. And a rifle is a weapon with a barrel of 16 inches or greater and an overall length of over 26 inches. This is all Polish. This was made entirely by Pioneer Arms in Poland. There's not a lick of U.S. parts on it as imported. As you see on this side, we have the Pioneer Arms Florida marking. 
And on this side, we have the model num name and caliber, Sporter 762, and Radom, Poland. The Pioneer Arms is located in the town of Radom, Poland. It is not the famous FB Radom, Circle 11, formerly Luxnik. However, it's worth just pointing out that FB Radom no longer has the tooling or capacity to manufacture any 7.6239 AKM pattern rifles anyway. So there's no way this could be an FB gun, they just don't make them. In Poland today, we have WBP and we have Pioneer Arms manufacturing AKM type guns. We have a true Polish receiver, stamped one millimeter, standard. Standard top cover, standard adjustable sights. We have military spec handguards with heat shield inside. Front sling swivel, as I already pointed out, a cleaning rod. We have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel. It does appear to be chrome lined. I do not know if it is cold hammer forged or button rifled. Hopefully we'll find out as time goes on. Quite a few of the components are cast on these. But to be fair, quite a few of the late FB Radom components were also cast. The front sight base and the gas block are cast, which is according to FB. Rear trunnion is cast. Bolt carrier is cast. Again, FB did that towards the end, as did Izhmash in Russia. Izhesk at the time. The bolt appears to be forged. And the most controversial part is the front trunnion. It does appear to be cast. But I'm not going to 100% confirm that right now until we do some testing. Cast versus forged trunnions is a big thing. I have been told recently that Pioneer does plan to switch to using a forged front trunnion. Or at least more forged parts, so that would be good if they do. If you recall, the original WBP kits that came in had cast front trunnions. And while none of them ever failed on people they ended up changing it to better suit the American market. Now, I don't want to equate Pioneer Arms to WBP. WBP is a known quantity. Atlantic has been building guns using their kits quite a bit, and it's been working very well. They've been tested, and they seem to prove themselves very nicely. Pioneer Arms, on the other hand, has to overcome the IO stigma. The I.O. imported and sold sporters, and help ups for that matter, have a dubious reputation. Some worked fine, some not so great. It's hard to say if this was more Pioneer's fault or I.O.'s fault. Now that I.O. is out of the picture, we should see a clearer picture. We'll revisit this in a second, but let's just talk about this pistol real quick. As you see, this is much more in the shape of an actual gun. Because the 89 import ban did not apply to pistols, there's far fewer restrictions. This ships with two waffle pattern Polish polymer mags, and it has a standard double stack mag well, as you see. It's not cut out. This is how they're imported. Still dimpled, like on the rifle. Receiver is the same. Barrel's the same, but instead of being 16 and a quarter, we're at about 12 and a quarter inches. Really, the only concession for import, they have to spot weld the muzzle device in place right here. If you break that weld, this just unscrews, and like with the rifle, it's threaded 14 by 1 left hand, so you can put whatever you want on it. It uses the same mil spec handguards, has a mil spec black polymer pistol grip, trigger group, and everything is Polish very well standard. This is essentially their version of a Draco. Trigger is decent. Action is as smooth as a brand new Wasser. Maybe a little more so. First impressions, the rivets seem fine. The finish is as good if not a little better than Wasser. Everything fits tight. There's not excessive play in the top cover. Just a little bit wiggle, as you'd expect, for an AK. Bolt group has normal play, but nothing excessive. Sights are straight. 
rear sight moves as it should. There are no overt immediate problems, but then again, these are both very new in, and we really don't know much about these yet. We will keep doing updates as time goes on. This does use a standard rear trunnion. It's basically off a thick stock AKM. They just cut the tang off the back here. This is good because if you want to put on a standard trunnion, the rivet holes are in the right places. So just pop these rivets and put new ones in. And you're good to go for an SBR. Alternatively, you could put on a stabilizing arm brace and keep it as is. Just pop the weld off the muzzle device, which is perfectly legal to do. And put whatever you want on. This is not a, I'm going to point this at you folks, this is not a working flash hider. has the right look to it, but the inside hasn't been machined out. This gets into some import restrictions. It's not really a good idea to import a pistol, even though they're less regulated than a rifle, with a flash hider nonetheless. The reason I didn't charge the action on this one, I think this is kind of neat. They know no one is obviously going to shoot it like this. Although perhaps uh, Nancy Pelosi or Dianne Feinstein would prefer if we all had guns that were single shot with um, um, egg crate stocks. But the reason I couldn't charge the action, and I didn't realize this till yesterday. Inside here, they're thoughtful enough to include your pistol grip screw and nut. Let's take that out. Let you look inside. See, we've got a Polish trigger group. We have a semi-auto cut safety, which is good. So if you did want to use a original trigger group from something else, you wouldn't have to worry about modifying it. Take this out. Polish group. It has been cut for semi-auto, which is pretty much all imports now on the carrier. What's nice though, this is not a so-called single stack or trim down bolt. It just has the full lug on the bottom, making conversions very easy. Very standard AKM bolt group. Looking inside here, we can tell we have a standard front trunnion. So the trunnion doesn't have to be hogged out. It will take a standard mag. And looking at it, it does not appear that the mag catch will need to be modified. It might need a little tweaking, but that's normal for any AK build. This is decidedly a stamped mag catch, guys. It has a little patterning on the bottom, which is kind of nice for better grip, but it's stamped. So it looks like we're just going to have to zip, zip, and then mags will go in. Then we can pull the stock off. We, they even provide us with two screws to use for our replacement stock. And currently Pioneer Arms is sending over their uh, side folding stock, the wire type, the fire poker, which looks very much like a Tanto style stock, let's call it. So they are sending over the stocks that would normally go with these. Or you could take a laminated stock set and go more of the classic AKM look. And the inside of this pistol looks identical except for the gas piston is a little shorter for the shorter gas system. Well, that was our first look, folks. We will be following this video up as soon as possible with some shooting. We're about to convert this. We're going to convert a couple of these this weekend. So please tune in again soon for that. I wish I could tell you these are monumentally better than the IO imported ones. I can't yet. I'd like to, frankly. Another inexpensive import alternative would be great. Right now, I can just say they're definitely not worse than the IO. And just looking at them without actually shooting them, first impressions are quite positive. Really, the chintziest part of this whole thing by feel is the, is the polymer mag, but what's in a magazine? Mags are cheap. That's the chanciest feeling part. Like I said, it there's no rattle. Mags fit fine. Actually quite tight. And that, of course, it's a polymer mag. 
We have an unneutered barrel on both, so that's nice for attaching suppressors or whatever else you want. So first impressions are positive with reservations, and uh, I think both Jay and I really want to see this gun succeed. So as we test it, and other people do, there'll be new info out there. But one thing I do want to be clear about, IO has nothing to do with these guns in 2018. Their partnership with Pioneer Arms is kaputs and has been for about four years. If you have any questions or comments or want to share pictures of your own guns below, that'd be great. If you like the video, please click like and also check out our other AK vids. And as always, if you haven't subscribed and could do so, we'd really appreciate it. Everyone helps. And finally, if you'd like to help support us so we can get to the range a little more often, please check out our Patreon page. It really is a decent trigger on this for what it is. Oh, final thought. These are cheap. The pistols are coming in under $600 new. And unconverted rifles are under 450 so you'll probably see converted ones in the 550 to 6 range, depending on which parts they use to convert it. Sorry folks, forgot to mention that earlier. So the prices, these are very commensurate with the Wasser 10 and the Draco. Or the Zestava NPAP and the M92 PV. And quite a bit less than an Arsenal. So, we really do hope they do well. We've also been very impressed with the WBP guns from Atlantic, which are built from Polish parts. So it's looking to be, maybe be a good year for Polish guns. <laughs> well, as always, we appreciate it, and please tune in again soon for more information on both of these guns. We'll catch you then.